Hello, my friends, and welcome back to a very special Brotato class guide. Hope you're all doing well. This is a special guide because it marks my 44th guide to Brotato classes and winning in Danger 5, which means that I will now have covered every single class in Vindola Brotato. Today we're covering the Well-Rounded, so if you're a beginner or looking to get your first Danger 5 win, this will be a great place to start, and I'll be going over the class and the game in quite a bit of detail to try to give you all the information you need to get your first win, or just to learn a lot if you're already a veteran player. Before we begin, I want to just quickly touch on a few things that I have had happen over the course of doing these guides. If you just want to skip ahead to gameplay, that will start in a couple minutes, but I just wanted to take a brief moment to say thank you so much to everyone who's been with me over this whole journey. It's been really fun doing these, and they've been super successful. I've loved all your comments, and how much people have enjoyed watching these videos has been great. This will be about three months since I started doing these Rotato videos, and I've actually timed this video so it will go up as my 500th video on the channel, many of which were done more than a decade ago when I was doing League of Legends content, but this is a really fun milestone to have reached in terms of YouTube. The date that I'm recording this also marks another fun milestone because I got my very first channel member, so Big thank you to McDonough for deciding to become a channel member. Really appreciate it. It means a lot to have someone say, hey, I like your stuff enough to uh, give you some money. And, you know, anybody else who wants to become a channel member, I think it costs three Canadian dollars a month. So you certainly can do that. But by all means, do not feel obligated to just your presence and your comments and views are more than enough for me. All right. So with the sappy stuff out of the way, let's get into the well-rounded. So the well-rounded, of course, gives you only upsides, which makes it an excellent character for a beginner, and it has a ton of solid advantages. This is an excellent character to go for for your first win because it basically doubles down on the strengths of things that you are going to want to do anyways. Max HP is one of the most valuable stats in the game. It Each point of max HP because each point of armor and dodge improves each point of max HP, every point of max HP that you have makes your armor and dodge more valuable. Every point of armor and dodge you have makes your maximum HP more valuable. So it multiplies really well to give you survivability with other stats. Speed is both good in and of itself because it's just better to be faster than the enemies, makes it easier to move around the map. And it also gives you better access to items that decrease your speed, many of which are very powerful, but going to a negative speed can be in, is one of the easiest ways to lose a run if you end up with negative speed. So having 5% speed both makes us faster, which we want to be anyways, and gives us additional leeway to play with. Harvesting, of course, is a stat that's very easy to overlook, but is, I think, one of the best and most important stats in Brotato. Each point of harvesting gives you that many materials and XP at the end of every wave, and because harvesting increases by 5% every wave, each point of harvesting makes each other point of harvesting that much more valuable. It also has an important breakpoint at 21 points of harvesting, where it starts increasing by 2 per wave instead of 1 per wave, because that 5% is rounded up. So starting with 8 both gives us a a great starting point for our economy and also makes it easier for us to hit that break point. For what weapon we're going to pick, I think the well-rounded of course can win with any of these weapons, but just to give you a really good idea of how to approach Brotato and just generally how to build a character, I think that the weapon that we're going to go with here is the SMG. This is both the best or second best weapon in the game, its only rival I think is the slingshot, maybe the spear, but it also, I think, will let us talk through a lot of the fundamentals of playing the game and sort of what breakpoints we want to hit. Something that I want to do with this guide is to talk about what our stats should be sort of at each point in the game so that we can get a good idea of what goals we're trying to hit. So let's grab the SMG and get started. It doesn't matter if we take damage in this early wave, the point is just to kill as many enemies as quickly as possible and pick up all the materials off the ground. When a material drops, if you pick it up, then you get to spend it in that shop. Otherwise, what it does is go into a bank where you will have materials banked, 
and then any materials in future wave will be worth double until you've depleted that bank. So you still get materials you leave on the ground as long as you're picking up more than you're dropping, but you won't end up having as many in the next shop. And of course, money early now, money now is always better than money later. That's both uh, good advice in games and good advice in real finances. So you should try to pick up as many uh, as you can. Typically, I think you're going to find with most characters that you end the first wave with 56 materials in the bank on a good run, and less than that on a bad run, on a, on a first opening wave. Uh, we have 65 here because we got 8 from our harvesting, and so that mean, means that we picked up 57, so we were slightly ahead of uh, the 56 that I consider a good number to get on wave 1. With our first level up, we're going to want to increase our harvesting if possible. So I like to spend up to five here. So that's two rerolls trying to get harvesting because we're trying to hit 20 as soon as we can. If you miss on harvesting, then ranged damage is going to be your second best option. In the first shop, you are guaranteed to see exactly two weapons in every single shop every time you reroll. So you can see we have a medical gun and a fist and then two items. Usually what you want to do is roll for weapons, lock any items that you might want to buy and save them for wave three because in your first two shops where you're guaranteed to see two weapons every reroll, you just want to max out your weapons to try to get your synergy bonuses online. Every weapon has a synergy bonus uh, or sometimes multiple, and as you get multiple weapons of that type, you gain that bonus. Guns, like we're using, have a pretty weak bonus, because in general, range is not an important stat in this game. Um, but overall, it's really important to get those synergy bonuses online, and it helps you level up your weapons. The other important thing to do in this first shop is to look at where your elites are and what they are. So you can see we have a horde on wave 12, a horde on wave 15, and an elite on wave 17. This is a pretty easy pattern. The hardest patterns are ones that have elites on wave 11 and elites on wave 14. And so if you're struggling, you should try to reroll until you have a pattern that looks more like this. I think this might be the easiest a pattern in the game with a 12, 15, and, and 17 with two hordes. Hordes are easier than elites, typically. We're going to reroll and grab a gun here, if we happen to roll one. And we're going to reroll and grab yet another SMG. I will be referring also to my weapon and item tier lists a couple times, so definitely check those out. They have lots of good information. And Weird Food is a, an item that we're going to lock, because we always want to buy this. It's an S tier item, one of the best in the game. So we're going to lock that, but not buy it, because we're still looking to get more weapons, and we're going to lock this submachine gun. I'm not going to lock the revolver because we pretty much only want to buy submachine guns or shotguns. I think that gives us the, the sort of best breakdown of weapons in the game. Those are two really good guns. They're the, the best two guns, and so we are trying to get that. If you have too many different kinds of weapons, you can sometimes have trouble leveling up your weapons. So you usually want to go with one or maximum two different kinds of weapons. And typically, I think you're just going to want six of the same weapon on most builds. But because this is a gun build, uh, we can get away with having two different kinds of weapons. Always break trees as they spawn. That's really important because, as you can see there, they have a very high chance of dropping crates. And they also are worth three materials. Fertilizer, one of the best items in the game. And this puts us over our 21 harvesting mark that we're trying to hit. So very happy to see that. And then here, because we've already hit 23 harvesting, I'm going to reroll this, looking for either more harvesting, we'd still take that, or flat range to damage. Yeah, because this is a level 2 upgrade and also just really good, we'll take the harvesting. And then here I'm just going to take flat range to damage. Our first goal is to get to 21 harvesting. Our second goal is to get to about 5 flat range to damage. I'm going to take this SMG and this shotgun, and we're, notice that we're still guaranteed two weapons, so when we reroll, we should see another weapon, and I will lock in this second shotgun as well. Because I've only rerolled once and we're guaranteed to see another weapon, I'm actually going to spend four on seeing if we can lock uh, at an item that we really want or a weapon that we really want. We missed on a submachine gun or a shotgun. That's okay. I think it was worth speculating on the four money there. And then here, I'm considering locking cake because max HP is so important, but I think I'm going to pass on that because we already have two items locked. The 
this run is going basically as well as it could, I would say. We've found most of our weapon set already. Five with a six locked is perfect. Um, be very careful of these floating enemies when you're using submachine guns, because every time you hit them with a projectile, they spawn a projectile, and submachine guns fire lots of little projectiles, so you're going to spawn a lot of bullet hell. Um, but as I was saying, this run, I think, is going basically perfectly, because we have five weapons with a six locked after the second shop, and we've got our harvesting going perfectly. We'll have a little HP. Definitely taking the plus speed here. Minus range, like I said, is not a big penalty, and plus speed is really important. And then as long as we keep finding these level 2 harvesting upgrades, I will definitely keep taking those. Here I'm going to take flat ranged damage, because like I talked about, our next goal is to get to 5 ranged damage. Grab this shotgun and grab the weird food. We are now, for the next three shops, the wave three, four, and five shops, we're guaranteed to see exactly one weapon on every reroll. So we should be able to roll and get uh, get the weapons that we find, but less effectively than in the first two shops, which is why we really wanted to get these going early. Here I'm going to grab the Scar. If you find Scar early, especially with large amounts of harvesting, the XP gain is quite valuable, so very happy to see that in the early waves. If you find it later than about wave 5, you usually don't want this item. I'm also going to lock the Tentacle, because crit chance is a good way to give ourselves some healing and also increase our damage. And because we have good speed already, we can lock this Mutation. Normally this item, I think, is hard to purchase a lot of the time, but because we already have high speed, we can afford the decrease in speed, and getting our flat range damage going is really important to this build. At this point, we don't currently really need any way to heal. The consumables that we drop on the ground from killing enemies and from breaking trees will keep us healed if we end up taking any damage, so don't don't worry about that. Do avoid picking up the fruits if you don't need the healing, though, because you want that healing stored up for when you actually need it. So you can see I'm avoiding stepping on those. Here I am actually going to take this baby elephant. We don't currently have any luck, so it's not doing anything, but it's only worth nine materials. And one thing that's kind of nice is getting lots of level one upgrades for a very powerful item that we might roll. If you've beaten the Renegade, then you'll have unlocked the, uh, won the game with the Renegade, you'll have unlocked the Fairy. And having lots of different level one items just to make Fairy good is pretty good in and of itself. So you'll often just take free level one items only for that reason. Here I'll take two flat range damage, so now we've hit our sort of five ranged damage mark, which is great. And I'll keep buying it, of course, but that's kind of where we want to be at. And the next important thing is we want to get up to about 20 to 50% attack speed and 20 to 50% damage, while still increasing our, our flat damage slowly. But that's the, the way that we're going to increase our damage the most. Still take the weird food, of course. And now our consumable healing is actually really good. And this is an excellent shop with a bunch of really good items. Uh, I'm going to lock the SMG because we do want to upgrade our weapons, of course. And I'm going to buy the bag because it gives us materials whenever we pick up a crate. So this will pay for itself sooner the earlier we grab it. I'm also going to lock the tree. Trees are excellent, like I talked about. And then we are going on to the next wave. I also think I misspoke earlier because I said that the wave three to f wave three to five shops have exactly one weapon. Uh, they don't. They have at least one weapon. The waves one and two shops have exactly two weapons, but the waves three to five are just guaranteed at least one. They can have more spawn. We do want to increase the levels of our weapons, so it's really nice that we have that level two submachine gun locked in the shop. One principle I want to convey is do not worry about locking items and reroll aggressively in your shops and in your level ups. Um, so like for example here, we could take 5% crit chance or 6% dodge, but those are sort of lower priorities for us. And I think we're still fairly likely to roll a good level two upgrade. So I'm gonna spend seven on rerolling this. And here we actually got six max HP, which we want much more than either of those. So I'll take that. 
Here I'm going to take 3% lifesteal because we will want to hit 10% lifesteal and it's a level 3 upgrade. 10% lifesteal is kind of the break point that we're looking for. Take the tree and I'm going to combine my submachine gun, buy another submachine gun. Um, one thing that's really important to know is that level 2 weapons are the sort of most efficient weapon, the best kind of weapons in the game are level 2, so it's really important to get them to level 2. Less important to go from 2 to 3 for most weapons, but you really want that level uh, level 1 to 2 upgrade is really important. It's almost always better to have more low-level weapons than one high-level and a, a bunch of... Uh, more mid-level weapons than one high-level and a bunch of low-level weapons. Here I will take the 10% crit chance because that's going to increase our damage output significantly. Negative armor is really bad, so we're going to actually lock this helmet just to mitigate that downside. Normally I wouldn't buy armor this early, but trying to not have negative armor is important. And then here we're going to reroll, lock in this shotgun so we can start upgrading our shotguns, and I'm going to lock in this blindfold as well because it's just a very efficient item. We'll start building dodge later on, and crit chance is really good, especially because our crit chance lets us heal with the tentacle. Definitely, if you have any questions about the game, about mechanics, about anything, um, or just are enjoying the video, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm, I answer every comment that I get, um, so I'm very happy to see those always. And of course, also leaving comments, liking the video helps a ton with the algorithm, so I appreciate everyone who does that. Let me know... Um, what's your favorite kind of soda? I like root beer. Here, just because it's level 2 and we don't have any yet, I'm going to grab some luck. You do want to get some luck over the course of a wave, and I like to just pick it up whenever it's sort of efficient to buy it over the course of the, the game, and I like to just pick it up whenever it's efficient to buy it. Uh, basically, luck increases the chance of you dropping consumables and dropping crates from enemies, which is really powerful. And also, when you level up, it increases the chance of getting higher level upgrades as you level your character, which matters a lot. Here we are guaranteed a level 3 upgrade because we're level 10, so you're guaranteed at least a level 3 upgrade. We're going to reroll this to see if we can get either attack speed damage or flat ranged damage. Those are the things we need the most. Uh, no luck here, so I'm going to roll one more time. And we didn't hit it, so uh, I actually, this, I would have taken max HP or the speed that we had in previous shops over this, so we got a little unlucky, but I'm still pretty happy to just take some armor. We will want to hit about 10 armor by the end of the game, so starting to get that going can help a lot as well. Even though we took the baby elephant when it was offered for free, I'm not going to spend money on it, but I will buy the blindfold, the shotgun, and the helmet here, and then reroll. And it increases our harvesting, but we do actually want to start boosting dodge, and we already have 50 harvesting, which is kind of enough, I think, at this point, so I'm going to pass on the, little, on the little frog. I will reroll once more here, and then we get to buy one of the best items in the game, the coupon. This will pay for itself many times over, so very happy to see that, and I'll lock the submachine gun. Also going to lock Cyclops Worm. Like I said, percentage damage is our next kind of goal to hit damage and attack speed, which are currently quite bad for us right now. Um, so very happy to see this, and we don't mind losing range at all, especially because our gun build is giving us bonus range, but you can go to quite negative range and it's really not a problem. On this wave, you're going to start seeing enemies spawn out of these eggs, so you'll see eggs hatching on the ground. Um, if you have decent damage, which we do, you want to let these eggs hatch because it's worth more money killing the enemies after they've hatched. They drop three materials after hatching, and so it's whereas only one if you kill the egg. So it's really worth it to let them hatch and then you get a little extra money. That being said, if it's costing you a lot of kills on other enemies to focus those guys down, don't worry about getting them. Only get them if, if it's 
Uh, here I'm taking a lot of damage because I was trying to kill that loot alien. Uh, you may not have seen it because it was under a lot of other stuff, but basically a, a loot alien spawned and they always drop a crate. So I, I very happily ran in, took a bunch of damage there just to make sure that I was focusing that loot alien down and we got a crate. Crates also are worth 15 materials, so that's even better. Obviously not going to take mastery because we don't need melee damage and we're, we're a ranged damage build, so we're going to recycle this. And then here, again, just because it's the level 3 upgrade, I'm going to take 3 armor. Going to grab some... upgrade my SMG, grab some damage. That should increase our damage output significantly. And I'm, I like Peaceful Bee a lot as an item, but on a ranged damage build, it's worse than on a melee damage build, because ranged damage usually costs you twice as much to buy as melee damage. And we're already at the point where our harvesting is okay, so I'm going to pass on the Peaceful Bee here, because we really just want to boost our damage output at this point in the game. I will take all of these luck boosts. They're very useful. And I'm going to pass on the revolver, mostly because there's not a convenient way for me to upgrade my weapons to get the revolver. I might go into a third weapon um, if it if I had, like, say, two level 1 SMGs and could go to all level 2 weapons. But as is, I'm just going to pass on it. Here I will upgrade this tentacle again, though. And then I'm going to reroll one more time and lock in this level 3 double barrel shotgun. That's a great upgrade that will increase our damage output significantly. Once we've hit our benchmarks for attack speed and damage, the next thing is going to be to increase our maximum HP and start building some defensive stats, which will be, for this build, lifesteal. Usually on ranged builds, you want to use lifesteal, or building some healing and defensive stats, and the healing for this build will be lifesteal, because usually on ranged builds, you want to build lifesteal, and on melee builds, you want to build health regeneration. Both types of builds want to build any consumable healing that they can get, because consumable healing is incredibly powerful. You will see that we have a lot of consumables stored up on the ground, which means that we're able to, if we start taking damage, run over those and gain a lot of HP back. And since when you are damaged, the game sucks in those consumables to you, you can often just get a huge burst healing as soon as you take damage, which is great. And for that reason, similarly, you should almost never take Alien Worm, because reducing your consumable heals is actually a really big penalty, so we're going to recycle that. I will take Wheelbarrow. The extra harvesting is still really good at wave 8 and minus 1 armor. We've actually got pretty high armor for this point in the game, so we're very happy to get extra harvesting. Obviously not taking this because it reduces our flat range to damage. Here I'm just going to take some maximum HP. If there was attack speed or damage, I would take that over it, but I'm going to take maximum HP here. And here I'll take attack speed. It's Attack speed is more important than percentage damage usually, and it's also a lower number right now. And one principle is that you should always try to increase your lowest numbers when they multiply together. So damage, flat damage, attack speed, and crit chance all multiply together. You should try to increase whatever one is lowest for best damage output. Most important is flat, then attack speed, then percent damage, then crit chance in order of importance. Very happy to see another shotgun as well, because now we can upgrade all of our weapons quite significantly. So we'll be able to get this to a level 3 combine two of our submachine guns to a level 3, and buy another shotgun for another level 3 weapon. Here I am going to take this uh, Lucky Charm, even though it does decrease our damage, but it's a lot of luck, and getting a little bit of extra luck, especially going into Wave 9, is really nice. Wave 9 has a lot of low health enemies, so luck gives us a very high chance to drop more crates and consumables from those enemies and end up with more money overall. We want to have at least 50, but preferably about 60 maximum HP before we hit our first Elite or Horde wave. So we have a little ways to go on that, although we will be getting some just for free from level ups. Mm. 
notice that because we have now 60 luck, we, we're starting to drop some crates occasionally just from random enemies, not even from trees or loot aliens. We also want to start increasing our lifesteal pretty soon. Usually with an SMG or slingshot build, you are going to want to hit about 10 to 15% lifesteal by the end of the game, because that gives you very consistent lifesteal income. In this game, lifesteal is a percentage chance to gain a single HP on a hit. It doesn't matter what the damage output was, so multiple small hits are really good for lifestealing and sustaining your health that way. Here I'll take dynamite, even though we don't have any explosion damage now. One of the ways that this build could, could end up going is if we find something like a rocket launcher or nuclear launcher later on, so very happy to just take that rather than take 11... Um, take 11 materials, which is not a huge proportion of our income. Here I'll just take the attack speed rather than rerolling, because we do want attack speed quite badly. We can now start upgrading our weapons a little bit again, so let me always buy the Vigilante Ring as soon as you see it, it unless it's very late in the game, because of course this is better the earlier you get it, and percent damage is something that we really want. And then here I am going to buy this submachine gun to get up to a level 3 submachine gun, and then I'm going to combine my shotguns to buy the level 2 shotgun. Shotgun benefits a lot from leveling up because it gets extra pellets. You can see 8 times 4 on the level 1, eight times, uh, 15 times 6 on the level 4. It gets extra pellets and it pierces more enemies, pierces through more enemies, so as it levels up it benefits a ton. Let's grab this other leveled shotgun and go. And then here we actually have, we've run into a problem, which is that we can't buy this SMG. Oh, I guess we can still combine these two level threes, but we're starting to run out of weapons that we can combine in order to buy more weapons. So we that's one of the downsides of having two different weapon types is sometimes that you can end up unable to purchase them. Here I'm going to roll again, and going into wave 10, I'm very happy to take Lure. This gives us two of those loot aliens that we saw earlier. Um, and I'm going to lock the sunglasses because getting our crit chance up to 30% means that our crits will be pretty consistent and it will be a real component of our damage output. Shotguns scale best with attack speed, and SMGs scale best with flat damage, so there is a little tension in, in what our two weapons want more, but of course we both we want as much attack speed and as much flat range damage as we can get, no matter what, so we're going to scale our weapon damage no matter what we pick. Here's one of the loot aliens that we got from our lure, that's very happy to take that guy out, Grab, make sure I'm killing the tree here. You want to kind of stay near the center of the arena, usually. Just for, um, it makes it easier for you to get to where you want to be, and also makes it easier to pick up all the stuff. There, I killed that, uh, just chased that loot alien around, making sure I'm healing up. You can see our harvesting is starting to give us quite significant amounts of uh, income. Here I will definitely take this, it gives us 5 max HP. We don't use the melee damage at all, of course, but losing range is not a problem, and getting 5 max HP is really good. And this is very lucky, but we are more likely to see high level items because of our increased luck, so that's one reason to get this. We get 5% lifesteal and 20% dodge off of this cape. We do lose out on a little damage, but the lifesteal means we're almost to our the 10 that we're trying to get, and we do want to hit 60 dodge by the end of the game, so very happy to see this item. We'll have to get some more rain, flat ranged damage to make up for that, but we should be able to do that. I'm going to recycle the boxing glove because knockback actually I, I think is typically a downside rather than an upside. It makes it harder for you to focus certain specific enemies that you want to. Here I am going to reroll and look for flat ranged damage if I can find any. I didn't get, didn't manage to find any on my first reroll, and we got attack speed, which is a very good second, so I'm going to just take attack speed here. And then here, I'm going to reroll this again. We don't really need more harvesting, and we really do want to find flat ranged damage, which I will take over 
even a level 3 speed upgrade. As long as our speed is positive, we're fine. We'd like to have about 10 to 15%, but it's more important that we keep our damage up with the uh, incoming damage. Very happy to upgrade my level 1 shotgun, because that makes it easier for us to upgrade to buy weapons in future, since we now have a weapon we can combine. Definitely take the crit chance. And Weird Ghost is an item that looks quite dangerous, and you have to know kind of which waves it's okay to buy it on. But because we have 8% lifesteal and very good consumable heals, and we're going into wave 11, which have low numbers of high health enemies, we can take the Weird Ghost and we will very likely get enough HP off of our lifesteal to not get one shot anyways. Here I will buy the compass, because bonus move speed is still really important to us, and I'm not going to take the banner. Our attack speed, we do want to increase it more, of course, but we also want to increase our lifesteal, and we have the uh, the weird ghost that we just bought, so we're, we need that lifesteal to make sure that we don't get one shot in our next wave, and we're actually very happy to see mouse. Something to keep in mind in this game is do not be afraid to buy items that increase enemy count. Those are good for you because more enemies means more money. More enemies also means more enemies that can drop uh, consumables to heal you or that you can lifesteal off of. So it's actually really good to have more enemies on the field. I'm also going to grab this and this as well. And then we're going to go to the next wave. With 13% lifesteal, we should be able to heal up quite significantly before we ever are in danger of taking damage. You can see we're already up to 20 HP, so we were never in any danger there. Weird Ghost you should avoid if it's an elite wave, because the elite might chase you down and just like one-shot you if you have 1 HP, but uh, otherwise you should almost always just take Weird Ghost and... One thing that you should be keeping in mind in this game is you should play... you shouldn't play scared. You should... you should play for the best outcome. I think that's generally true in most strategy games, that you want to focus on upside, potential upside rather than potential downside, because you're going to end up, um, well, it, because humans are naturally risk averse, so the potential downsides are always going to weigh heavily in your mind, more heavily in your mind than potential upsides are, so you need to take a conscious effort to focus on taking risks. I'm going to take the baby gecko. It's nice to pull the materials in, and while we don't care about range, it certainly doesn't hurt us to have it. It's better than the uh, 11 materials would be, I think. And here, because our attack speed is, is higher than our damage, I'll take the percentage damage. Going to upgrade my SMG here with the SMG upgrade. Even though I took the dynamite earlier, we don't have anything that explodes, so I'm going to pass on the explosion size. I was very much expecting to immediately roll into a nuclear launcher there, but we didn't. An item to look out for is this medical turret. It can often solve a lot of your healing problems on its own, so I like having one on the field. And then here I am, again, very happy to buy this SMG. If I do so, though, then I won't be able to afford the warrior helmet for this wave, but I think I can afford to just buy the, the better weapon, because that will help me farm faster, and we'll buy the defensive item later. Even though we're going into a horde wave, I really just want to have more damage at this point. Since I have an item locked, and I've already rerolled the shop twice, I'm just going to leave it here and save my 165, go into the next wave. This is a horde wave, so we're going to see a lot of enemies spawn. We want to play kind of near our medical turret, so it can help heal us if we start taking damage. Notice that there are lots of enemies on the field. I took a bunch of damage, so I'm going to back off to sort of the, the corners of the map, play around the edges, try to make sure I'm focusing that loot alien down, and then I'm going to pull the enemies up there. We can take a couple hits as we sort of move around, because this is a horde wave, so there's, there's lots of enemies coming in. As long as we maintain our health, though, we shouldn't have too many problems. You can see that as I take hits, I've got these consumables on the ground that are getting sucked into my character. 
uh, as soon as I take damage, and that heals us back up immediately, which is why the consumable healing is so important. We do leave a lot of materials on the ground, so we're going to want to pick those up next wave, but still, that went quite well. We were never in any danger of dying, and we got another legendary item, which is really nice. This potato is one of the better items in the game. Of course, it's got just a bunch of every stat, which is great for every character. Ritual, another item to look out for if you've beaten the Lich, because 2% lifesteal is a great item and 6% damage. This is just a very efficient package of stats, and we don't care about losing engineering at all, of course. Here I'm going to reroll this, even though there is one flat range damage, which I wouldn't mind. I think we can, we're late enough in the game and have enough luck, we can get a, a level 3 upgrade. Um, and yeah, I'll take 9% speed. Up to 20% speed, I think is still worth grabbing. At a certain point, you have like too much speed, but I think 20% is still fine to have. Very happy to upgrade my shotguns here. And then buy the warrior helmet, which another another reason to take that speed is we were just about to buy the warrior helmet, giving us armor and HP. And I'm going to continue to increase my luck here. When, once we have sort of 50%, 50%, which is about where we're at, we want to get a little bit of crit chance. We do want to increase our range damage again, because we've bought a couple things that decrease it. I would like to have more like 10 at this point. But kind of the next step is to get 15%, 10 to 15% lifesteal, which we have. And then the next step after that is to get 80 to 100 HP. So that's our next goal. Here I am going to lock this wheelbarrow. I think wave 13 is still uh, early enough that the 16 harvesting will be quite valuable to us. Notice that the weapon upgrades mean we're clearing these enemies quite quickly. Though they are still generating a lot of projectiles over there. You obviously do have to learn to dodge every different enemy type. Um, and I talk about that a lot throughout my guide series, so definitely watch those. But this video I'm focusing mostly on getting your build right and what stat breakpoints you want to hit. But of course, all the build guides in the world are not going to fully make up for just walking into enemies, so you, you do need to practice not doing that. <laughs> Some comments that I get are like, sometimes are, oh, you survived that only through player skill, and it's like, well, yeah, you do, you do have to also be good at the game. <laughs> uh, here, we're very happy to take some more dodge and crit. And then flat range damage was exactly what we wanted, so great to see that. I'm going to increase my harvesting significantly here, because Tractor is an excellent item. Very happy with that. And I'm also very happy with the Terrified Onion, just boosting our speed a little bit. I'm going to grab the Tentacle here. Tentacle gives us additional ways to heal, which is really nice, and of course increases our crit chance, which we want. And I'll reroll once more. Panda is going to be very good for us as well, so I will definitely be grabbing that, and I will also be upgrading my submachine guns to level 3 here, and then locking this submachine gun so we can continue to upgrade our weapons. Max HP was what we wanted. Like I said, we want to get to about 80 at this point, so max HP and luck will be really nice for us. The rule of thumb for luck is just like take it when it shows up, but you want kind of as much of it as you can get. So just fit it in wherever it kind of naturally appears in the shops or as drops. On this wave, these enemies, the slugs here, drop uh, the little guys who run around and shoot projectiles every time they die. So you want to stay near those slugs after you kill them to avoid building up a critical mass of the little goobers who can make it really hard to dodge once they start firing a lot of projectiles. Make sure we're breaking these trees as well. You can see that as we start taking hits here, we now have between our healing from critical hits with the tentacles and our lifesteal being quite high, we're now able to regenerate any hits that we take pretty quickly. 
and recycle this because we don't use engineering and losing 4% damage is bad. And then here, very happy to take a little more flat ranged damage because it's pretty low right now and you want to increase your lowest numbers. Gonna definitely take this panda here and this submachine gun. I'll upgrade the shotgun because like I said, shotgun benefits a lot from hitting level four. So very happy to just upgrade that and then leave our submachine guns at level three. And I'm also going to buy this stone skin. This is an excellent item once you've unlocked it because it boosts your max HP and it also makes buying armor more valuable. We want to be buying armor anyways, so we're very happy to do that. I'm not going to pay 200 for 20 luck. We don't use the elemental damage at all, so we're skipping on the wolf helmet. And then here I am going to buy this butterfly because even though we are already at our 15% lifesteal mark, we'll still just keep upgrading it. And then I'm going to lock in the blindfold for more crit chance and more dodge and the recycling machine as well. Recycling machine's an interesting item because it says 35% more materials from recycling items. So like if we mouse over this, we'll get 88 if we recycle our submachine gun. But the thing that is sort of unintuitive about this is this is 35% of the total, not 35% of the amount that it would give you. So it's it's way more than it looks like. It's more than double the existing amount. And then also, it uh, when you pass on an item that drops from a crate, that counts as recycling it. So when you have crates at the end of a wave, you, there's going to be some items you don't want, and the recycling machine increases the material return that you get on those. So it's a very efficient economic item. It took me a little while to realize this, and in some of my earlier guides I pass on it, but it's actually one of the best items in the game. You should always, almost always buy it when you see it. It's also just inherently good to buy any unique item, any item that you can only see once in the shop, because it means it won't show up in the shops in future. So that decrease, uh, shrinks the item pool that you can see items from, which makes it more likely for you to get items that you actually want. We're just kind of hosing down the horde enemies as they chase after us. And with only a little time left in the game, I'm going to dive into the big group of enemies to make sure I'm picking up all the materials there. Never take padding, um, with very few exceptions. Losing 5% speed is really bad, and it's just a very inefficient way to buy HP, so we'll recycle that. And then here, I'm going to buy four armor because we have the stone skin, so this also gives us four HP, which is really nice. And we want to hit 10 armor by the end of the game anyways, at sort of a minimum. Reroll this, see if we can get a good level three upgrade. I'll reroll it again. A little unlucky on this, but I'll just take two more armor. We really do want to boost our armor, and that gives us max HP as well, which is really nice. Even though we lose one HP and one armor for buying this, getting to 60 dodge, since your dodge caps at 60%, really good as well. We're now at our 80 HP, so the next goal is to hit 10 armor and 60 dodge. So we're going to do this. Armor before dodge, but we've already got our armor. Metal, an excellent item, just really efficient overall, so very happy to buy that always. And I'm going to buy this bait. It makes special enemies appear, so you do need to be a little careful not to buy this during elite waves, but 8% damage is just a really nice upgrade. And those enemies do drop money, so it's also sort of a, an economy item. You can see the, the leeches that spawn here. They're very high damage and high HP, but we were able to take them out because our build has come together really well. So as long as we're doing good damage, it should be pretty safe to buy bait. Once again, I hope I'm doing a really good job of explaining the, uh, <laughs> the sort of mechanics and principles that I'm using here. Um, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. We also have a great community here who are very knowledgeable about this game and can answer a lot of questions that people have as well. Make sure I'm picking up all the materials sort of at the end of the wave that I've left on the ground in the middle. Garden is really good because just more consumables on the ground, especially when we have additional consumable healing. So... Very happy to grab that. And a level as a level 4 upgrade, I'll just definitely take the 20% attack speed. 
Here I am going to for sure take the wheat. It gives us a little harvesting, which is less important, of course, at wave 16, but the flat range damage is really nice. And I will also just buy both of these percentage damage items. Missile is one that you sometimes don't want because losing attack speed is bad, but it still will increase our overall damage output. I'm going to pass on the Pocket Factory, even though this is an item I like sometimes even on non-engineering builds, it's pretty expensive at this point in the game, so we're going to pass on it. And then here I will buy the Broken Mouth for sure, that's an excellent way to get max HP, and then I'm going to buy the Wings as well, and the Armor Plate as well. Our max HP is pretty good, so I'm not going to lock Little Muscly Dude, but we could definitely do that if we were hurting for max HP more. Here's our first Elite. This one will leave lots of these slashes on the ground, so we want to make sure to take it out as soon as we can. Um, we want to clear the high health enemies that it's spawning as well to make sure that we're focusing it. And then you just want to kind of stay near it, dodging its attacks as best as you can, but our build is pretty good defensively, so we don't need to worry too much about that. And then we take it out. It's really important to burst down the Elite, so you want to stay as near to it as you can during the um, elite waves because the longer the wave goes on the more other enemies will spawn and the harder it will be to focus your damage on the elite. So that's one reason you really want to front load your damage in this in this game. And make sure that you can burst down elites as they show up. This is a slightly lower damage version of the build than I think you're often going to end up with, just because we decreased our, our ranged damage a couple times. You would probably end up with like fifth, uh, 20 flat range damage at this point. And since that's all being multiplied by your attack speed and crit chance and so on, it, that's a lot of extra damage that we would have. Of course, we're very happy to see heavy bullets here. Five range damage and 10% damage is excellent for us, so that's great, even at the cost of some other stats buy those two items, and we can upgrade our submachine guns here as well, so we'll do that. Combine and buy. And then I'm actually not going to lock the crit chance. At 40% crit chance, it's, it's less important for us to get crits. The crits are mostly good because they let us heal, and although crit chance does scale linearly, like each point of crit chance increases your overall DPS the same as each previous point, um, it still does fall off a little bit because the main advantage of crits in this build is that we're healing every time we kill something with a crit. So we just need to make sure that we're critting enough to do that. I'm going to lock in this SMG and this ritual and then go to wave 18. One thing that we haven't seen that is really good on any ranged build is any way to make our bullets pierce enemies. Um, piercing is super important for ranged builds because melee builds normally pierce through everything they attack. Melee weapons normally pierce through everything they attack. Ranged builds stop at the first enemy they encounter. And so ways to increase piercing basically double the damage output of most ranged weapons. You see, our dodge is high enough that as we're walking into stuff, like I, I walked into that, you know, we, we dodge a reasonable percentage of the time and we just heal up immediately as soon as we've taken damage. Metal plate, excellent as well, so in just keep increasing our armor. You know, we want 10 armor minimum, but getting more is obviously better. And the more HP we have, the more valuable each point of armor is, and the more armor we have, the more valuable each point of HP and dodge is, so it really works to together well. Recycle this eye surgery. I'm going to buy the max HP here, even though we do want to increase our dodge. 8 max HP is still really good, and I will just take 8% damage here. The next thing that we want really is just to get our dodge to 60%, but uh, everything else in, at this point has really come together for this build. Reroll. I will continue to upgrade my submachine guns. Reroll here, and here's the piercing that I'm talking about. This will be very valuable in terms of wave clear and damage output. And with 20% lifesteal, I'm actually going to pass on the butterfly. At 20%, that's already way 
more healing than we need. Like sort of 15% is kind of where we need to be. So uh, we can pass on that and just look for other things that will help a lot. Um, we also already have 30% speed, so we don't really need speed or lifesteal. Normally, Finn is an excellent item to find, but I'm actually going to pass on it here. Because I think the only thing that matters at this point is just having a little more dodge, so that we don't accidentally die by taking a bunch of hits in a row, and just enough damage to kill the bosses quickly. Obviously, all of the stat breakpoints that I'm mentioning are rules of thumb. You you have to play the shops that are in front of you, of course, and you know you got you got to play the game that the game gives you. So don't be disheartened if you're not hitting those numbers exactly. You see how much more we're we're clearing these enemies just because our bullets are piercing through them. No longer are we getting like big clusters of enemies because we're we're actually just killing them as they start grouping up together. gonna pass on this because we don't use engineering at all so we don't really need these constructs but more dodge and more crit chance is great and then here i could get uh, four armor and that will also give me some more max hp i think i'm just gonna take the attack speed though because we just want enough damage to clear the bosses vigilante ring at this point doesn't do anything because we're going into our last wave we don't have enough health regeneration to want the regeneration potion so we'll pass on that Leather Vest is one of the best items in the game, so very happy to see that. It's very efficient, and when you have Stone Skin, the downside of the minus 3 max HP is mitigated, because you get 2 HP from the armor. Uh, we are almost at our 60% dodge here. I'm going to re-roll this, I think. We are just looking for more damage or more dodge. Alien Magic is usually quite good as well, just lots of max HP. I typically like that a lot, so I'm just going to buy that and the Finn. I think we're likely to get more use out of these than out of just re-rolling for other things. So I'm just going to buy anything that will help at this point. Here, I'm going to re-roll again. We can't afford anything else, but that's fine. Let's go on to the next wave. You can see we have almost all level 4 weapons. You usually want to focus down the octopus head boss before the other boss. Because uh, it, it just has a better attack pattern, or a more dangerous attack pattern. And you want to try to stay near it because it attacks in a circle around it. And the closer you are to it, the slower the thing that you have to dodge is moving because of how circles work. So if you stay near to that guy, you're able to both focus it down pretty well and also it's easier to dodge its attacks. Then you just stay near the other one and focus them down. And that should be a Danger 5 win for you. All right, my friends, I want to say again a huge thank you to those of you who have stuck with this series. Uh, this is a one-hour video for the Well-Rounded, but I think it's worth it because this is both my 500th video on this channel and also having completed every class guide for Brotato. And I really think that it's nice to be able to do a very detailed guide aimed at beginners and veterans alike with a lot of heavily explained information. Our final stat spread is pretty good, I would say. You know, we maybe wanted a little more flat damage and we ended up with a little more speed than we needed. Didn't quite hit our 60 dodge mark, but that's all really good. And we've got a little more, you know, HP and lifesteal than we need. So that's really nice. Um, you can see here that we've mostly bought items that I rated quite highly in my uh, item tier lists, if you have checked those out, and we're using two of the best weapons in the game, so this should get you a win pretty easily. Alright my friends, thanks so much for watching, and as always, if you've enjoyed the video, please do take the time to leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, both of those help a ton with the algorithm, and I read all your comments and reply to all of them, and you can subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Cheers! And GG.